Hi everyone, it's Gobi Abuchi here with the Leading From Your Core podcast and vodcast. This show is dedicated to helping leaders all around the world discover leadership wisdom, stories and insights that will enable you tap into the power of leading from the inside out. Our current season is focused on mental resilience among leaders, and I'm delighted to welcome on the show, Matt Ovenden. Um, Hey, Matt, great to have you on. Um, Matt, just for our listeners and viewers, is a leading British entrepreneur and business mentor who has successfully launched a number of exciting ventures over the years, including businesses dedicated to developing renewable sources of energy. He's also got an incredible passion for boats, which led him to one of his latest ventures as the founder and CEO of Borrow Boat, which is essentially the Airbnb of boats. So Matt, really excited to have you on the show and looking forward to our conversation today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. So our listeners and viewers get to know a little bit more about who you are just you know tell us some of the stuff that I haven't mentioned and and particularly what do you enjoy about being an entrepreneur okay yeah um I'm uh I started didn't start off as an entrepreneur I had a career in engineering many years ago Obi and I shared uh, <laughs> positions on a graduate training scheme together at London <laughs> Underground about 20 years ago now would it be 20 years this year wouldn't it yeah um and uh so I I trained as a chartered mechanical engineer um and you know I had a normal sort of career path at, at that point I guess but then sort of took a bit of a left turn off into into entrepreneurship like 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 yourself Obi uh, uh at a certain point and um I'm I'm now a, I'm a dad of four, um, a, f- a family man. Uh, but I've been working for myself since 2009, if you like. Well, st- starting businesses since 2009. Um, I've enjoyed enjoyed this process. Um, felt felt it suited me to to create things and build things. You know, um, it's been it's it's never it's not dull. I'll put it that way. There's definitely some ups and downs. Uh, it's there's challenges all the time but you know i kind of wouldn't have it any other way um and and we are where we are now it's this is bora boat is the fourth business we've had some good good outcomes and and learned a lot along the way oh and and we'll come to some of those lessons shortly one of the things that scares a lot of people about being an entrepreneur is the unknown and the uncertainty and the challenges and how you've got to navigate that. And, and I think that fits well with the theme of this season, mental resilience. So I'd love to go there mm-hmm. with you, Matt, and just ask, what does mental resilience mean to you? And what role has it played in, it, in enabling you to get to where you are today? I think it's probably fair to say uh, you need a certain amount of rent, mental resilience, really, to, to go, go out on your own and, and start these, do things uh, from scratch and start things off. Just because, as you say, the, the amount of unknowns there would, is unsettling for you know, many people. I mean, I think, I think some, some people are either suited to the startup world or they're, or they're not. And we've had mm-hmm. various people through the doors uh, in, recruit, in recruitment in the various businesses at various times. Some have been a perfect fit and have loved the culture of a, a growing starting startup business and others who have hated it. Some people have come from a, a big, you know, some people just prefer, they have strengths in other areas and just prefer to know lo- longer ahead what's, what's coming and plan ahead and have much more of a secure, stable environment around them. Mm-hmm. Other other people, other other of us, I guess, find that inhibiting or stifling, and, and, and would rather have a bit more of an open open ended potential future outcome and, and blank canvas. And we'd like, you know, with that comes the unknown. It could go the right way, or it could go the wrong way. But you need to be able to sort of take the rough with the smooth if you're going to go this way, don't you? Um, as as you all know as well, I've been. Uh, so it's sort of, you know, you, you, you take the potential upside with the potential downside and you've got to have, I guess, a certain amount of mental resilience in there to be able to, 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 to take the, the blows and obstacles that, that you might come across. Um, and if, if you didn't have, have that, I guess, you would, you would find it incredibly stressful 
Uh, mm-hmm. You'd probably not enjoy it and not get the the potential ben- benefits of, of doing this sort of thing. Uh, and you'd probably decide it wasn't for you. Sure, sure. I, I love that, Matt. Just, you know, hearing the, the story and those are realities for a lot of people, a lot of business, a lot of the entrepreneurs that I speak to and chat to and coach. And that there's, I, I want to unpack something you said about just being able to take the rough with the smooth and just the blows that come your way. So for you, what, what's your perspective of those blows? Is it just, hey, this is just part of the journey. It's, yeah, that's a, I've had a setback. I've had a bit of a, a blow, but it's all part of the journey. How do you view those? Because some people see that as, oh, it's, the, it's an obstacle. It's the end of the road. I can't do any more. But mm. you clearly see it differently. Yeah, um, I guess you do take it in the mix and say, yeah, this is, I mean, unless it's some sort of a, fatal blow to the entire business <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah we don't want those do we <laughs> no no i mean yeah, yeah you normally um yeah i mean there's always things never run smoothly i mean with a startup you can never really plan particularly far ahead i would say not ever in, in all the, over the 10 years of it much more than confidently more than three to four months ahead you really see exactly where you're going to be because things are moving fast mm. you've got to try and stay ahead of the curve and, and plan for events but obviously you never quite know what's around the corner uh, or things don't always uh, pan out exactly as planned so you, you're constantly adapting I think constantly revisiting your plan readapting re reattuning where you are means some some of these things if there's a development that's not as you as you've planned maybe you sort of you you plan your way up to it and around it rather than full steam into it and you know, derail the everything you know, i guess you try and try and just be very pragmatic and regularly review where you are and what you're doing um sure. i yeah, guess yeah. minimize mm. i love that I, I what you're describing i often talk about it as it's imagine a wave you can't control a wave and and you're into boats right so you'll know this you can't control a wave but what you can do is is ride it and surf it and i i've come to see that as a great way of developing a perspective that helps you have that resilience that i can't control things control is an illusion what i can do as you say is is pivot you can reassess and, and work out what is it I need to do differently in order to move in the direction that I'm, yeah. I'm heading. Yeah, I think you've got to strike a balance. You can't try and control everything. You, you don't want to be a micromanager uh, as such and trying to be a micromanager. You'll just find it incredibly stressful, I think, and it will be counterproductive and you'll probably burn out sooner. So sure. that, but also you don't want to be completely hands off the wheel, just freewheeling along and, you know, yeah. it could happen <laughs> of to you. Course. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, hey, wherever it takes me. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I, I do believe you can plan and you can either decide to plan ambitiously or, or cautiously and you can, you can make plans and you can go pragmatically about carrying them out and, and you can make amazing things happen like about keeping a cool head and just carrying out plans that make sense that have been thought through and planned and rationalized and, and are realistic and and this is you know just by getting on with things looking at things methodically and then going about implementing you can do amazing things yeah I, yeah that's brilliant I, I can't help but just that uh, another idea because you're, you're into boats these just seem to be coming to me but it, it's this sense of knowing where you're going because you talked about being able to just think ambitiously you can plan ambitiously or cautiously so have an ambitious plan of here's where I'm going and there may be storms and stuff that come my way that mean I've got to move a little bit to the right or to the left but I still know where I'm going and by having that incredible vision that plan that goal of how to get there then you just take the that's right um, and I think a lot of that some of the storms that come your way yeah. yeah, I think a lot of that proves it, that the planning matters a lot. You know, fail to plan and plan to fail. Like you, if you're going about a new business or a new a new venture, you need to plan it well, research it well, have thought about a lot of it, and then then you go about the implementation. Now, the implementation sure. may not follow the plan exactly, but if the plan sure. is good, you've got a pretty good chance of getting somewhere near to where you plan to get to. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Well, let's. Um... 
talk about this then. What, what's been one of your greatest leadership successes and, and, and what, what did it reveal about your mental game and your mental resilience? Yeah, okay. Um, I'd probably pick out the fundraising, crowdfunding with uh, Borrow a Boat, actually, just because okay. uh, that Borrow a Boat was my fourth business, but I hadn't really raised capital for a business before. I'd worked with investors and raised capital for, pro for projects and financed numerous large renewable energy projects and other projects. But this was a different um, sort of thing where fairly early on in the process of or a boat being a tech company requires a significant amount of investment in the tech from pretty pretty early on sure. um we immediately had to 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 raise capital um it, within the first year i think we raised capital twice and we've done it as a business seven times we've raised capital something like that we've raised just about five million to date um yeah i think i think the business wouldn't be where it is now if we hadn't you know if i hadn't raised that capital um sure and it definitely needed me to get across the the plan yeah and and the, and the vision mm -hmm. and inspire confidence in people to put their money forward and, and invest um mm. which was easier said than done and i think it it it, it didn't all happen easily um it was challenges in there you need, need a good degree of mental resilience i mean with crowdfunding if you don't reach 100 percent, you have to cancel the funding round you could have had a I lot see. of money contributed wow. you could have had hundreds of thousands contributed but if you don't get 100 percent, you've got to give all that money back to everyone wow. to cancel the round so that that's a degree of pressure uh, on on then and with crowdfunding you know, back in 2017 it was it was the norm to launch about 30 percent funded so we had, we'd launched set out to raise capital and only have about 20 percent of it in the bag and you've got a ticking clock of uh, 30 days to raise it that's an incredible amount of pressure <laughs> yeah wow. uh, and you, we, we, we were se several weeks in um and not not 100 percent, you know and so i had to sort of to raise 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 the game the fundraising game so right let's do more more pitch events reach more people and i guess it was a bit of a challenging moment it was you could have you could have given up at that point i could have gone no this we don't think we're going to get there you know um sure and it was a week to go i think and we weren't a hundred percent on that first round um no the second round this is actually sorry a big pardon okay. the first round went quite the second round we were with we a week to go we were we were still short sure and um i just decided to uh, not give up i guess you know i thought would you, i just need to cast a wider net here to reach more people let's do this up the activity level we had a certain plan yeah, for the yeah, funding yeah. round but clearly it hadn't got us to where it was supposed to have got us to by that point so i had to just up up the uh ante and uh, meet more people get more introduced on board do more pitch events do more of a campaign we held a sure. meet founder event uh engaged more vcs directly went straight to vcs direct instead of individual okay. angel investors and what happened is we got um a vc came on board in that last week with a wow. 500k investment and then that powered the round over 100 percent. and then someone else another group of investors saw that and they came forward with another 500k investment sure and wow. the round ended up 250 percent funded but it was a moment where you just had to dig deep, uh, for sure. You know, you could yeah, yeah, yeah. easily could have just wrote, wrote it out, blamed uh, the circumstances, blamed other people, but this is just uh, not going to happen. The market's not right for this. There aren't enough investors around. It's easy to blame other circumstances. But that was a moment to sort of sink or swim, really. And that was dig deep, you know, up the game. You can, having sleepless nights already because you probably blow the target but sure yeah go harder go harder at it go meet more people i was contacting introducers and contacting more funds and i thought just the more i thought i firmly believed in the idea that they borrow about mm. uh, people will mm. invest in this sure uh i just need to keep meeting more people because a certain amount of people were saying no although yeah. a certain amount were saying yes so we just had to cast a wider and wider and wider net and yeah. then we found the people and we got the money and and, and off we went Mm. amazing amazing story <laughs> i could just sense the the pressure and imagine what that 
last week was like, but I, I love the fact that you said there was this moment for you where you thought I could either just, that's it, pack it all in and, and just give up and, and say circumstances and difficulties in the market, or yeah. I can dig deep and up the ante. And you, yeah, you I said- I, I could have, I could have gone. gone away without losing a lot of face. I don't think a lot of people would have, you know, blamed me, you know, it was a tough thing. Sure. I didn't want that outcome. I didn't want to, you know, yeah, say we yeah, failed yeah. and we didn't raise the capital. So yeah. It was it was no there was no two ways about it for me. We had to we had to get it there and it was yeah, it was a, a dig in moment. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I love that because you're just drawing on some incredible elements of resilience that you said you firmly believed. You firmly believed that this was possible. It was just a question of, hey, we've just gotta up the ante here yeah. and if there was any doubt in you then you probably would have said well maybe i, I there was a part of me that thought it wasn't yeah gonna work out, there would have been time to like quit just, yeah. yeah yeah but I, I still believed in the assumptions we'd made and I, i'd made right at the beginning uh that this was a solid proposition the market yeah, needed yeah. this sure you know, done all, all work the research to, to to bear this out so i believed all that data yeah yeah this was yeah. not an emotional sort of passion project just sure. emotionally this was like a, a, a rational there's something here and there's an opportunity and that those facts hadn't changed yet for me so i guess um i'm someone who always goes on the, the logical rather than the emotional i guess sure. you know, there was an yeah. emotionally tough situation there but i was looking at the fact that you know, this is still this is still sound the business the, yeah. the, the business yeah. opportunity is still there the market opportunity is still there there's lots of proof of other investments of this sort into similar companies um there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to get this this is the way i'd sort of look and so i just need to meet more people and cast it wider and, and go harder yeah. at it and increase the activity level yeah uh, and that did that did come through with it in the end yeah but you're right it would have been a potential time to, to throw the towel on sure yeah i i love the fact that you said that hey i did the research this was a sound proposition so there was no need for me to give in to perhaps the emotion of fear because some people all that's going on mm. when they're facing a difficult moment is their emotions get the better of them that the boat is wobbly and then suddenly they think i don't know if i can move in this direction because i can't really see where mm. i'm going and you know all of the storm and hail and all of yeah. that but you're saying listen i know that we can get to that destination yeah. and yes it's a bit choppy the waters are a bit choppy at the moment but we can uh, get there so love that loving the boating analogies you've inspired me there mate man. so many you can use, yeah. you so many there. so many and i'm sure yeah. our listeners and viewers can connect with it we yeah absolutely no there's so many good ones like what about what about so that's a great example of just you facing a uh, you know, challenging moment and just upping your game and really digging deep and, and tapping into your belief. What about what's been one of your most significant failures and, and what has that taught you about your mental yeah. game and resilience? OK, so I'll probably pick on another situation with my third business. Um, so this was a renewable energy business. We were building off grid renewable energy specifically at this point. Um, there was a, there was an opportunity market opportunity um because the oil price was very high back in 2014 mm -hmm. 120 dollars a barrel plus much higher than it is now or has been since actually um and renewable energy was at a real sort of tipping point where i'd been working renewables for the previous five years and we've done a lot of wind farms in the uk and we were we launched this business and we were working on some great exciting projects in Necker Island in the BVIs with Richard Branson um, and Tigo. This was a Caribbean based business building renewables in the Caribbean predominantly. There was a situation in by 2016, two years after launch, where the market conditions had changed slightly, like the oil price in particular had fallen from over $120 a barrel to around $20 a barrel. Um, and renewables are always competing wow. with oil. That's just the yeah, fact yeah, yeah. at the end yeah. of the day. And it just made the whole sell of renewables much harder. Uh, a lot of people who, had, who were thinking about doing it were saying, well, actually, I'll just stick on stick on my diesel generators for now because 
sure. price has come down so much. You know, I'll, I'll, park, I'll park that. And I'll, you know, this was starting to happen a bit across the um, the board of, a, of our of our sales funnel. So um, it was a challenging situation, um, but I also had to step back and go, like, let's not just plow on regardless you know in the face of it just from sheer gritted teeth because actually mm -hmm. it, it goes back to that, that rationale is something is, is is the rationale all, all still good here sure. there was a problem i think you could you could i could argue that that business was too reliant on geopolitical uh parameters staying at a certain point but it, sure. it, there was actually a problem there in that that business uh, I, I could see so I decided to exit that business and that was the way I responded to that uh, sold to my oh. business partner and um, it was and walked away from from that market yeah. yeah so that was a moment to sort of just think this is the right thing to do here um, it's not the way you would have wanted it to go necessarily uh, it oh. wasn't the outcome we potentially could have had in the market but at the same mm -hmm. time I thought it's the best thing to do to go on to go on to the next thing and i mean later that year i found it borrow a boat so wow i, did, I didn't yeah. know i was going to do that straight away but i thought i'll, I'll go and do something else where the, the, sure. the, there's better market conditions and um I, I know how to build a company i know how to build a team I, I can i can do something in a different sector i did consciously want to get into more of a tech focus area I could see the whole boom happening and in, in app economy and the smartphone revolution there's such a lot of energy in that since in the last decade and um sure. i consciously wanted to move that way i wanted to move to b2c as well to just try that quick fire b2c type business where uh, yeah and um borrow a boat emerged as the idea and went hard at that and haven't, haven't looked back and that would that was five years ago now yeah wow wow <laughs> well so so it, i mean it sounds like in a sense you even in that situation although it wasn't working out you just came to the decision that this wasn't really the best for you for you right now and that was okay it just it was a decision to walk away from it yeah yeah because things had changed sure i think if it was still over 120 dollars a barrel and all the original market conditions there all the all the assumptions we've made at the beginning of the business uh -huh. was still the same and then i wouldn't have walked away from it i would have said there was some i would have looked for somewhere okay. else for the problem but the, the problem yeah. was with the fundamental underlying uh business proposition actually in sure. that space at that time yeah, and yeah. you could plow on you know just for sheer gritted teeth sure. and it might have been like just you might have started to find you're trying to you know, push water up a hill or something you know if it's not if there's actually a bigger problem yeah yeah, yeah. best to figure that out sooner rather than later and change yeah, yeah. change lanes yeah and, and for you from a mental resilience perspective is that just about hey facing up to the facts and knowing when it is time yeah, to was... to yeah walk away and leave the situation yeah because yeah, i think mental resilience is really important of course it's an attribute but you can't have it blindly you sure. can't say i'm just going to be resilient to whatever yeah yeah, yeah 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 uh, i could have ended up still being in that business now banging my head against the wall and, and not really got anywhere so there's there's just keeping an eye on the wider a picture and rationale for everything all the time and the assumptions that have been made and and they're yeah. bearing out and things like that you know it's right it's the way i'd look at that um and there's a time to to fold or a time to to, to go twist if you like you know and so um we're just yeah. doing both <laughs> brilliant so so yeah mental resilience isn't stupidity right it's not yeah, yeah it's just not, keep going uh, regardless yeah, not, of not just for the sake of it yeah not yeah. like i'm going to be bloody minded i'm just i don't care if <laughs> yeah, the whole yeah all the wheels are falling off this thing i'm going to just stick to yeah. it you know you can't yeah. be blindly yeah. resilient no but yeah. resilience where the situation makes sense and you've got to carry on and not let the emotional or the impact of certain events to knock you off course i guess yeah sure cool um so some great examples from a, a business perspective i just want to touch on life generally because the last 18 months for a lot of leaders have been incredibly intense so not only yeah. are they having to think about businesses a lot of leaders are, are family people as well and so they're having to think about family so just how's mental resilience shown up in life for you over the last two years yeah well it definitely has i mean in the last two years um 
probably particularly in in 2020 um i've had to had some of the most mental resilience ever i think with the with the homeschooling of four kids under the age of 10 while still oh, running, running wow. my business yeah <laughs> <laughs> while still running your business yeah um, and i and and yeah just tell us more because i guess the, the, the business too must have been under pressure right because how was that impacted by yeah no it was all going pandemic. on at the same time 2020 obviously we we're all in the sort of um unknown with this pandemic weren't we the boat charter sector i mean boat charter was banned globally for quite wow. a few months of 2020 uh, the most of the spring we had a small flurry in the summer mostly in the uk and then um it was in the autumn it was all sort of prohibited again so our revenues were very very stifled and it was very much kind of batten down the hatches right, to do another a boating hunt <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um it was it was sort of you know uh, you know, it's, you know bunker sort of mentality slightly at survival let's keep make sure the business comes out the other side yeah, yeah. um so that's got enough you know i've got several thousand shareholders to answer to who've crowdfunded us and a, and a venture capitalist fund and uh that was a, that was quite a lot on my plate to be dealing with but there was also the fact that my wife's uh anesthetist on the front line of covid so she wow. was often at the hospital and then the four kids were, were at home a lot in 2020 and um they needed homeschooling at the same time as i <laughs> running the business. So it was definitely an exercise in mental resilience there and, uh, <laughs> and multitasking um yeah it was a different kind of challenge it was just uh, yeah juggling how, how to juggle so many things at once sure. really you know what, what helped, old, you? What helped you with all of that well i mean you see it was easy to sort of complain about the situation but that kind of wasn't going to get you anywhere you know sure. there's no point complaining that we've got kids because we yeah we we, we made decisions to do that and we, we make yeah. it and the, I don't really you can't turn there. back on that decision i'm not now. someone who sort of <laughs> goes around complaining about parenting when i've decided to have kids yeah yeah um there's not really much point complaining about the pandemic because it's just no one you know it's just something that's happened so there was sure. a kind of you could just get on with it really um mm. there's no there's no two ways about it that you've got to find practical solutions i guess yeah um yeah. to to the logistics of uh supervising young children and working and there are ways and then you can eventually sort of make that work and, and sure. get, get by and uh, that's what it ended up happening but yeah. yeah it wasn't wasn't easy that's for sure not for the faint-hearted <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 i know i know what that was like during the pandemic we we haven't got four we've got three but it was it was a a challenge navigating working building the the business uh the homeschooling swapping out who's going to be in the study who's going to be in that room it, it's just it was intense and I, I love though that your perspective was and, and I'll summarize it this way. It's, can I change this situation? I, I can't. And so if I can't, then I need to accept it and then work out what I can do about it. I think that's a big part yeah. of helping us be Yeah, there was no real two ways about it. Yeah. Situations. Yeah. And uh, you, could, you could have complained and kicked up and stamped your foot and, you know, made a fuss, but to who? And, you know, for what, really? You know, it was what it was, and you had to just make it work sure mm. sure well hey final question mm -hmm. matt um over the years for, for me through my experience my challenges work i do with leaders coaching and training them I, i've discovered this truth that when life squeezes you and the pressure is on and uh, the winds are hailing all around you um what you're like on the inside will come out so from your experience, how can leaders make sure that what they're like on the inside helps them to be as resilient as possible, especially in challenging situations? Yeah, I think that's true. I think you fall back on your inner core self-belief, I guess, in very, very tough situations. Um, so underpinning a lot of, a lot of it is your, is your self-confidence, I guess, and sure. your, your own personal self-confidence and balance, which you know, and how to build that, um, well, it, it comes from 
a mixture of all areas of your life I think you know what kind of home life outside of work life do you have what are you supported mm. family if it suits you where are you living where you want are you where you want to be oh. you know are you living in the right area with the right people in the right setup do you have the right balance in your life exercise hobbies friends yeah if everything needs to be balanced for you to be at your best i think yeah and yeah. you know if several of those are out of kilter i think you'll never quite mm. be at your best mm. and that's to be uh, the best version of yourself if you like and and your self-confidence builds I think, I think partly from having all those things, but also experience builds self-confidence more sure. than anything yeah, else yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. So if you're going to enter into something, I suppose, uh, stay, you know, make sure you feel you've got the right tools for the job. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. can easily over overreach. Um, and then you might be a nagging lack of self-confidence or something sure. like that. Um, so it's a balance between, you know, staying in a comfort zone but also feeling confident enough to, to have you the self-confidence to carry you through what you're doing it's that balance yeah. and only you can strike that that individual yeah balance yeah. for yourself yeah. but i would say that you, yeah your, your self-confidence is built up from experience but from your wider life as well yeah yeah and i think that's that. what you fall back on in the tough times you know you, you, how you really feel about yourself and your own self-confidence and self-esteem comes into play mm, mm, brilliant yeah that's so true because in those moments you're you're essentially with yourself and and you're asking yourself questions do i have what it takes right and yeah. so if you don't have can i do this or not yeah do I yeah can i do it yeah. yeah can i do it and i get it it goes back to that story you shared of, of the the funds that you were raising and in that moment a week to go it's can i do it and clearly with you had the, the network, you had the support, you had the experience, you had the right tools. And so you're able to say to yourself, I can, let's dig deep, guys. I know this, we can get um, to where we where we want to, which is, um, yeah, yeah, brilliant. That's brilliant. Right. And it, it, it's some, some sort of underlying self-belief, self-confidence, I think, that, that underpins this at those times. Yeah. yeah. And I think your question is how to build that. It's because that, that is <laughs> yeah. resilience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's my, my take on it. Yeah. Hey, Matt, thank you so much. Great to Thanks, catch baby. up as well. Uh, great to talk through this and share your story. And I, I'm sure our listeners and viewers will have taken a lot from that, from someone who's in the thick of it and knows what it's like and knows how to navigate those storms uh, not just out on the sea but in, in <laughs> business <laughs> i know so hey um just to our listeners and viewers remember that if you want to be a courageous and resilient leader if you want to live life on purpose and with purpose then it starts from the inside out have a great day see you on the next show and matt thanks again for coming on the show thank you Obi.